Hello, and welcome to the first ever live in-studio episode presented by JCTV4. I'm Matt Rebar. And I'm Elizabeth Egan. So putting together this show was rough work. First, we had to clarify with the FCC how many times we can use Father Niehoff references without getting sued. Right, right. That was only the tale of it, too. <laughs> Trying to find props and pieces were exhausting. And if you ever need to find some cheap wigs, feel free to ask our staff. Well, actually, Elizabeth, we don't have any wigs. We didn't we, get any we wigs? We didn't get any wigs, no. Scratch that. So we don't know anything about that. But uh, we were sending out emails about which individual microphones we wanted to use and what chairs would look best for what. And it was quite the challenge. And of course, the talent who were extremely hey, Matt, Matt. Oh my God, I'm so difficult. Hi. Oh, yes, okay. Rachel, what do you mean? So I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, in the script, it says that I'm supposed to say that this is more challenging and time consuming than the Murphy Hall renovation. Yes, that is scripted in the scene. Yes. I was hoping we could change Murphy Hall to cafeteria. Cafeteria. There, there's no construction in the cafeteria. At all. Not? No. A lot of scenes where the food's so bad. Okay. There's no oh, proper kitchen. Okay. Well, moving right. on. Awkward. Talent can be difficult. <laughs> la, 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 Carly. La, 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 Carly. La, la, Carly. What you doing? La, la. Oh, I'm just practicing for the live performance part of the live episode. La. Oh. Um, you want to take this to the back room? Can you? You know. We're going. You we're, this is we're filming. We're live. live. Oh, we're live now. What? You need to filmed. oh go just Camera. go. Th thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Um, so back with what we were saying about the challenge. Right. The challenge. Difficult. Have you have a emergency backstage? We can't even get through an opening. How are we gonna make it's it really through a whole episode? It's a really, really so big what is the emergency? We ordered chocolate cake and we got lemon. <laughs> Wait. I think this is funny. So the switch didn't break. No one messed the costumes. The live scenes we have for the circus set, they're they're okay in the back, but the cake. You're the only one who can handle this, Matthew. I, I, can't, it's, I can't. It's fine. Can't. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Be lucky that we were able to afford cake. Yeah, All right, fine. we'll take fine. just, just fine, fine. thank you. We have a great show for you guys. Some of the awesome students scripted and tech the way to victory tonight. And again, welcome to JCTV4's live episode. I'm Elizabeth. I will be your host tonight. And once again, that is live. So literally anything could happen. I hope you're ready because I am. And now we're going to kick it over the news desk with Rachel and Abriel for JC Update. This is a JC Update. I'm Abrielle Neely. And I'm Rachel Veda, and here are 2K14's top stories. Five-time league MVP Payne Manning lost to a second-year quarterback with a salary so low, a gambler could have made that much just by betting that either team would score on the first play. I don't see how that's possible since only one team showed up. Kind of true, and retirement is looking pretty good about now for uh, Payne Manning, I'd say. You know who else may need a retirement? Our nation's president was having some troubles while hosting the event in performance at the White House, Women of Soul. The 44th president misspelled Aretha Franklin's hit song, Respect. R-E-S-P-C-T, find out how to spell it, please. It's a shame that the vice president isn't any better. If Obama ever chose to step down from office, America would still have a problem. In one of his speeches, Joe Biden was promoting Obama's campaign for a three-letter word and that's jobs. J-O-B-S. Jobs. <laughs> the 2014 Academy Awards took place Sunday, March 2nd, with host Ellen DeGeneres, along with pizza delivery, dressing up as Glinda from The Wizard of Oz, and one epic selfie, Ellen sure spiced up the Oscars. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong movie, anyway. Again, Leonardo DiCaprio left the Academy Awards without an Oscar. Maybe they should have scheduled Adina Menzel, or as John Travolta says, Adele Dazim to sing Let It Go after the Oscar was yet again not a word to Leo. Wait, come back. back. The infamous snowflake mishap from the 2014 Winter Olympics has ended in scandal. The man blamed for the technical difficulties during the open ceremony had a very untimely death. Sources are saying foul play has been ruled out, but I don't know. We are talking about Russia. Hey guys, do you want to see one liner? So sorry they jinxed you gentlemen and better luck next year. Until next time, I'm Abrielle Neely. And I'm Rachel Veda. Good, Good night. night! Thanks girls. 2014 is up to a great start. Okay, so who here likes really long time consuming school projects? Anyone? No? I know you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right, so Abby Rings has been working very hard on a class project recently. So let's check in and see how she's doing. Oh. Gosh, I'm so bad at broadcasting. Are we ready to record? Oh, okay. 
All right. Hello, I'm Abigail Rings, and I'm interviewing two of my closest friends who are among John Carroll's most notorious. Joining me first is Timothy Allen Fickey. Tim, thanks for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure, Abby. You know, as the executive president of John Carroll University Student Body, I like to help out the student body in any way I can. Student Great to body. hear, Tim. Yeah. So, what do you enjoy most about John Carroll? Well, Abby, as a tour guide and an employee of the Muldoon Center, I think my favorite thing is the student body. Um, and I'd like to help out the student body that I can in any way. So um, a vote for me is a vote Tim, for... Tim, Tim, focus, focus. You already won. You don't need any votes. Oh, 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 I mean votes for me as the president position of the JCU Colored Pants Society, Abby. As you can see, I'm not a guest at that dinner party. <laughs> Back to my original question. Tim, what do you enjoy most about John Carroll? Did, did I tell you about Beta Theta Pi's charity event next week? You see, I'm the philanthropy chair, student body, and I'm trying to raise money for good causes. If you could help me out in any way, please email Tim, me Tim, Tim, yeah. can you please answer my question? I'm so sorry. What's the question? What do you enjoy about John Carroll? Well, it's definitely the people. As you know, the student body is dear to me because they elected me. And I like to help, you know, just anyone. My next question and my final question is, where do you see yourself in five years? That is a great question, Abby. <laughs> and I'm so glad that students like you and the student body are able to ask me these questions. You see, students are so integral to me, Abby. As an employee of University Heights' is, uh, City Hall. Thanks for I, joining us, Tim. It's truly inspiring to hear about your commitments and other ventures. That's just me. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, hopefully the next one will go better. All right. Well, that's what the editing process is for, right? My second guest is a CLC leader and future CLC president a notorious light and spiritual source on campus. She was a formidable force in student union and helped rework the future core curriculum for the school as well as revamp the communication side of her, the organization. Her legacy is pretty intact. She also happens to be one of my best friends and my roommate. We have a lot of fun together, including the times that we spend making fun of our fake cat. Please welcome my best friend, Brianna Lazarczyk. Abby! Oh my gosh! I am so excited to be here with my best friend to help her class project. I can't believe you picked me. I mean, I know I'm pretty interesting and rad, but I'm just so honored and excited, and I'm just overwhelmed with how awesome you are. Thanks, so, Bree. Wow. Thanks, Bree. Yeah. So my first question for you is, what do you enjoy most Oh about my gosh, you know what I enjoy most, Abby? It is Starbucks, and I am so addicted. I like to go there at least twice a week. Um, too bad I don't have a car because I go there before class and after like the, one of the five meetings I had every day. And Bree, yeah. Bree, you missed my question. What do you? Oh, Abby, our good friend Rachel Am Amanda Willingsworth, she got into grad school here and she's going to be coming here. I'm so pumped. She went to undergrad for business logistics and now she's going to get her graduate degree in nonprofit administration. Like, so happy, so stoked, so, so, so pumped. Bree, oh, I'm just so Bree, happy. Bree, yeah. what do you like about John? Bree. That's my name. But Abby, I was wondering what I should wear for the upcoming Lambda Chi Alpha charity ball. And I was like, should I wear this red dress with sparkles or that black dress that makes me look like one of the Hercules ladies on the vase, you know, in Hercules, that Disney animated feature fe featuring Pegasus. And I was mm -hmm. like, there is no way that the Lambda Chi's are gonna want me to just show up in these sparkles in red. They're gonna want me to bring it. So I was like, definitely the Hercules um, black dress. I mean, is that even a question? Like, my, question, yeah. my question. You have a question. It's about my hair. Okay, I got a recent haircut, and it's kind of shorter than I thought. And I put in this hat because you know I'm from Pittsburgh, and you know I was gonna. I, was, I had to go to campus ministry because we have coming up, and I was like, I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, Abby is gonna get me all natural. <gasps> yeah. Okay, and we're out of time. Thank you to my guests Tim Fakey and Brianna Lazarczyk, who didn't answer a single question. But gosh darn, do I love oh, them. Oh, Abby, we love you. <laughs> Well, Abby, you've got some very active friends there. Uh, it looks like your project's going great, and I wish you the best of luck. We're going to kick it over to the sports with Joe McCarthy and Caitlin Salvino. Joe? Thanks, Liz. We start in the pool with the women's swimming and diving team, who placed in the top three for the Ohio Athletic Conference Championships. Sophomore Lindsey Fano won two titles at the championship alongside a runner-up finish and the 400 free with the squad of Tori Watson and Katie Sheffield and Rachel Liberton. 
The squad also had four All-OEC Academic Award winners in Fano, Liberton, Sheffield, and Watson. The men's swimming and diving team competed at the national championship meet. Senior Nick Hovley will be competed as he made the cut in the 50 free with his time of 2061 seat at the OAC championships on February 13th that were held at Indiana University. After finishing the season while being in the top 25 in the nation the entire season, the record-breaking John Carroll women's basketball team led by first-year head coach Kelly Marone, it was a rocky start to the postseason after finishing the regular season with an OAC regular season championship at a 15-2 record. The championship was the first in school history. Taking on Ohio Northern in the semifinal round, the Blue and Gold lost a close one 71-80, but a national tournament bid was not lost. The Blue and Gold got an at-large bid, the first in school history, after beating Texas Lutheran University in the first round that set up a matchup with number one ranked Thomas Moore College was next. The Blue and Gold dropped the battle, exiting from the national tournament. The Blue Streaks had four players named to the academic All-OEC honors. Ashley Bastock, Emily Johansson, Aaron Mogg, and Christy Wade all received the honor. As February came to an end, the John Carroll men also saw an end to their season. The OAC play started at home, taking on Otterbein University. John Carroll won with a score of 95-74. to Later, they also won the next two games in the tournament against Ohio University and upset number one Mount Union. In the championship against Wilmington College, it came to an end to the streaks winning streak, losing a hard-fought battle. The Blue Streaks finished their season with a final record of 18 and 11. Thanks, guys. It sounds like the guys had a great season. We're going to take a break real quick and get a quick word from our sponsors. God, I am so hungry. Do you want to go get some breakfast? Me too, but I don't have time to sit down and eat. I need something fast. Okay, well then, where do you want to go? I don't know. It's not like I, you can rack up breakfast and eat it. Or Actually, you can. You can. Um, at Taco Bell, they have a new breakfast menu. They have a breakfast burrito. They have like waffle tacos and AM crunch wraps. Oh my gosh, Taco Bell's the best. Like, it's fast, it's delicious, and you can eat it with your hands. <gasps> Yay! Yay! I love it! Oh, we, we are, are definitely, definitely going, going to Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. I like you. We're friends now. I'm just kidding. Taco Bell is not our sponsor. If they were, I promise you we would all be eating tacos right now. Okay, but we would like to take this minute to say a huge thank you to the John Carroll Communications Department as well as Dr. Beadle for supporting us and giving us funding for the show. Without you guys, we would not have been able to make this possible. We really appreciate all that you've done for us, and we're so excited that you gave us the chance to do this. So what do you guys think? You having a good time so far? Yeah? Can we get a hand for Dr. Beadle in the Communications Department? Yeah. All right, so coming up now, we have a little bit of drama. And this is going straight into the Eager and Passionate's Heart Club. Hey guys, um, so I'm so glad we have another meeting. I see we have a new member. So I'm going to give a quick mention of what the program is. Um, I'm Dr. Monrez, I'm here at Eager and Passionate Hearts Club. We like to use an open forum to discuss our situations and provide, talk about our problems and obstacles behind the mind of So we use stories, experiences, and words of encouragement to uh, discuss our problems here. And I'm here to facilitate, facilitate the meeting. Um, does anyone want to start? Um, yeah, I'll start. Excellent, Jules. What's new with you? Well, it's been day 1,234 since I've had a date. Really trying hard to meet the men folk. I mean, who wouldn't want all of this? But seriously, I'm getting really depressed. And I just need to get my hopes up because Mr. I could walk in the door at any moment. So oh my God, did you see him walking through the door over there? Well, Jules, that? Jules, Jules, that's a glass window that lets us observe the hallway. No, 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 no. So he's he out there. But he didn't walk into the room. And he also seems to be a minor, so I don't think he's going to that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just taking every opportunity I can get, you know? Well, definitely take opportunities, unless those opportunities uh, land you the opportunity. <laughs> To see jail time. Hey, well, you know what? They say if it's a jailable offense, it's worth the arrest. <laughs> uh, Jules, who says if it's a jailable offense, it's worth the arrest? Uh, my crack dealer. Okay. Anyone else have anything to share? Wilma, what about you? Nope. Are you sure? I mean, this is your time to share. Nope. I have nothing. I simply have nothing. Like my emotions, which are nothing. Nothing. Bethany, why don't you or your new friend share? Yeah, I know today I like, brought my friend Gina, and I think she has like a lot to contribute to this like panel, so I think she should go. 
Yeah, I have this problem of being really awkward around men. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm sure you'll be able to overcome your obstacle. No, not really. If men are like in a four foot radius of me, I just get really awkward. Okay, well, is that a natural occurrence? Or maybe do you think that's just kind of bad to bed? I think it's just a symptom. I'm so nervous around guys. I just, I just. Okay. Well, I don't really know how I can suggest to fix this, but why don't we, let's just try, maybe just try and be calmer and collected and quieter. Do you want to try that? Let's try this. I like to try. Let's try and see if we can overcome this, okay? Here we go. I'm just going to slowly move towards you. Okay, that didn't work. Okay. Um, well, but you know what? That was good. Four class, Regina, everybody. Okay, okay. Bethany, how are you doing with your habit? Uh, well, I left here last week like very determined not to follow for everyone I like, met, but you know it's not working out so well. Well, it's all right to fall for someone, Bethany, but you have to remember you have a habit of falling for someone based on nothing. Um, you can't have love on first sight with everyone. Like you're right. Like I believe that too, but like this one's different. This one. Who is this one? I don't know his name. I don't know who he is, but I saw him standing in front of me at Starbucks, and he was very dark, very dark hair, very tall. Oh. He had one of those like new modern day haircuts, and he's just. He's everything, I know. Great. Tell me about it, baby. And then we got to the register and he just felt like he was the one. I knew he was going to get married because we had the exact same order. Light chai with a little bit of light, little whip and some cinnamon. And I knew right then we were going to get married. Wait, so you knew you were going to get married to this guy just by having the same drink order? I just knew Dr. Manrez. I mean, then I just took a big sip and he drank and I just, I knew it. I saw myself right there in the chapel. I just knew it. Okay, well, you said, I think you said earlier that he picked up his phone. Who was he calling? I mean, probably his boyfriend, but I couldn't tell because he was wearing these beautiful diamond stud earrings and I was mesmerized. Well, that's me. That's a whole issue. I mean, clearly and clearly he does maybe, I, how do I put this gentleman? Does not seem to be your... Honey, I can change him. No. And then I went online to see one of those like little baby websites and let me tell you, it's the cutest thing you could ever see or meant to be. Okay, um, that's really enough for one day. But let's give a recap for next week, Bethany. Please don't fall on anyone based on any drink orders. Um, Gina, just try and regain yourself, regain your composure. Um, and Jules, just, 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 just stop. Whoa. Did you see one? A man? No, I, I, no. I, right up there. I don't see him. Hey, oh, on a date with me. Do you see him? Oh my God, it's that man. Just, just it's okay. definitely the Starbucks man. No, oh. it's, it's none of them. No, it's not the Starbucks man. And it's... I bet you ordered a light chai. With extra cinnamon? No. Extra cinnamon. No. Dude, let's go for it. Yeah, baby, let's get all this jewels. No, 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 no. Well, I wish them all the best of luck with their love lives. Uh, recently, Kaylin, Neal, or Kaylin Green sat down with the women's basketball head coach, Kelly Morin. Let's check it out. I'm here with the women's basketball coach, Kelly Marone, and Kelly is a 2003 graduate of the University of South Carolina. Thank you for being here. Really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. So I understand that you have been coaching since 2005, mm -hmm. but can you tell me a little bit about your experience as a player um, and how you kind of got into or had the interest to be a coach? 2005 seems like a really long time ago. Um, I think it's just a natural progression going from high school athlete to college athlete. It's a huge part of your identity when um, you talk about going through the, the different phases of being an athlete and it's really hard to step back from that type of competitive energy. So the opportunity was there after South Carolina. My um, One of my assistants actually got the head coaching job at Buffalo okay. and luckily, luckily enough brought me with her and I just got rolling from there. I loved it. It became a huge part of, of um, who I am and what I, what I wanted to do, not knowing it. Um, going into college, I didn't major in basketball, I'll say that, but I'm okay. really happy that I'm here and doing it. So Awesome. And so you've, since 2005, had plenty of plenty. coaching experience. Yeah. Um, but what makes your first year at John Carroll as head coach different? Yeah, I've gone up and down the East Coast. It was Buffalo to Davidson to Rhode Island, back to William & Mary, and now driving up to Cleveland. So wow. a lot of miles on the car. But, Definitely. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think... As an assistant, you, you adopt different philosophies that your boss, your colleagues that you have to work with, you, you really learn a ton about what works for them, what 
you think may not work and you try and get bits and pieces along the way to develop your own philosophy. Um, I worked for four really great women. I had wonderful assistants to work alongside of and just absorb as much as I can. But I mean, the, the biggest difference, obviously, in being the head coach is it's, it's all your responsibility. You know, the, the decision making happens at, at your desk and if it's right or wrong, um, it's, it's up to you. So right. definitely just in the responsibility piece of it is the biggest great, change. Great, great. Well, I mean, you've obviously done a lot already for the women's basketball team here, um, you know, leading them into victory in the first regular season OAC. Um, but what are some specific uh, points that you'd like to focus on for next season? Well, I mean, we're missing, we're losing a lot to graduation. Our senior, Missy Spehar, is an All-American and uh, National Player of the Year finalist, which is fantastic for her. Big reason for our success, our point guard, Allie Lustig, just went through the record books as well. Um, assist, she's been nationally ranked in a bunch of categories. Um, but we were looking for the pieces of the puzzle to keep coming together so that we can sustain success. Um, improvements on, you know, obviously defense and just individual player development, but I think we're, we're in a good spot, so. Well, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on such a great season. Thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely. As any player or fan would know, football season never truly ends. The NFL has been in the works of generating this season's final roster. To update you on all the latest NFL news, I'll break it down by the numbers. So let's start the countdown. Five for the current five top ranked free agent players. Number five is defensive end Michael Johnson from Cincinnati going to Tampa Bay with a five-year deal. And number four is Washington linebacker Brian Oricapo, where he will play for the 2014 season is to be determined. Ranked third from the top is unrestricted free agent Buffalo safety Jarius Bird. His new team is to be determined as well. And just shy of number one is Carolina defensive end Greg Hardy. He is a franchise science center for Carolina. At the top spot is tight end Jimmy Graham from New Orleans. His next team is to be determined as his status remains as franchise non-exclusive. Number four, Caesar Cleveland's number four round pick for the NFL draft order. Cleveland also has the 26th round pick from Indianapolis. Number three is Johnny Manziel, has received a lot of media attention with his performance at Texas A&M. But on the third day of Pro Days, Manziel was outshined by teammate Jake Matthews. Pro Days officials believe Manziel has to drop the whole Johnny football image and concentrate on his skills rather than his ego. On his personal Pro Day, which, is, or which was on March 27th. And number two is when the Brown season tickets for 2014 will go on sale, which is the second day of the business week, Tuesday, July 1st. So Cleveland fans, mark your calendars and get your tickets to see the Browns turn this Cleveland curse around, even if we do say that every year. But this time it's going to be different. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. Yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> In one stand for the NFL record, the Cleveland Browns have just broken the preseason, this preseason for longest tenured head coach. For those in the audience, I really hope that you pick up, picked up the sarcasm. But the Brownies truly held on to any infamous record when they fired head coach Rob Chazinski after just one season. This puts the Browns at number one for most head coaches, coaches in franchise history. Hopefully the latest added to the list, head coach Mike Patine, will be able to stop this trend for a while and bring Cleveland the results it has been waiting for. I really hope so. For a long time. That would be great. Very long time. Yes. Always. To start the season of softball, the John Carroll women took a trip to Florida for some preseason action. The team, led by six seniors, went 4-4 four and four while playing in Florida. The team also had an unusual one hour at bat against Notre Dame College. Sophomore Alyssa Coleman was at the plate when a rainstorm forced her out of the box. After an hour delay, the two, got, the two teams got back to play until a power outage forced the teams to a different field. The Blue Streaks finished the trip to Florida and took on Ohio Wesleyan in the first matchup of the regular season. The team is now 7-9. and nine. And now for news on the baseball side. During spring break, the John Carroll baseball team traveled down to Punta Gorda, Florida for their state of games in the Snowbird Classic. After enduring a 22-hour bus ride, the guys got off to an incredible start by defeating Bluffton University on Sunday, March 2nd, 13-5. However, their good fortunes would not last long. The Blue Streaks dropped the next three games in a row, 
losing to Widener University 6-5 on Monday and being swept by Augustine Flor College 5-4 in a 10-inning heartbreak of a game, then 8-1. Yet the guys kept their heads up and never quit, resulting in winning the next two games against the University of Scranton, whom they beat handily 14-5, and then splitting a doubleheader with Moravian College. And the doubleheader split, the Blue Streaks won the first game 10-5, but ended up dropping the second game 21-10. The baseball team ended their appearance in the Snowbird Classic strong by beating Newman University 10-8 before getting on the bus for another 22 hours back to Cleveland. That would have been heck. I, mean, that, that, I know. <laughs> Those poor boys. I know. I Great bonding so experience. Yeah, right? I'm sure. All things considered, the baseball team did very well, leaving sunny Florida with a 4-4 four four record. Great job, guys. That wraps up our show. Thanks so much to Lisa Lewis, our advisor, who came with the, up with the idea and was with us every single centimeter of the project. Without her, we couldn't do what we do, let alone construct a live episode that went pretty well. And I'll thank you to Catherine First, who was a director and producer, <laughs> and she's an awesomest vice president that ever existed in the JC organization. And I really owe a lot to her. Thank you to all the talent for providing their skills, all of tech for making sure the project could move swimmingly. Thank you for your support and finances from the Department of Communications, and thank you for being here live and joining us in our audience. From the staff of JCTV4, thank you for watching JCTV4 Live. Good night.